So when it comes to membranous for secondary causes, let's start off with drugs, right? What kind of drugs are associated with membranous? Not penicillins, but penicillamines, right? You have something called penicillamine, which is what? It is a chelating agent. And a chelating agent that is used in what condition? If somebody's got Wilson's disease, your drug to chelate them is going to be penicillamine, right? So that's where penicillamine actually comes into play. But gold salts is going to cause nephrotic syndrome. Rheumatoid arthritis. Because this is what they're going to give you in the board saying, hey, patient's got nephrotic syndrome. What is the association for membranous? And they'll give you drug, penicillamine. They're like, when did I last see penicillamine? Mercury. But other than that, women, cosmetics can have mercurious substances in it. So you can get exposure to mercury through cosmetics. Okay? So that's when you're going to think of mercury. And the other one is going to be NSAIDs. NSAIDs can also cause it. Next, cancers. What cancers can cause membranous? Colon cancer, lung cancer, melanomas, right? You got colon, lung cancer, you got melanoma, right? A lot of these solid cancers, remember, you check for what antigen. What infections can cause membranous, immune complex development? But infections such as hepatitis B and C, okay, something more unique, which is going to be syphilis. Whenever you have syphilis, you have exposure of the, spiro the, the spirochete and then you'll have antigenous exposure and you'll have antibodies and you're going to deposit. So syphilis can cause membranous. Apart from all the damage H. pylori does, all the problems the board likes to ask questions, it also causes membranous.